Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we're going to tie in one of my favorite topics to solutions, and that's the idea of stoichiometry. Um, we, can, we can solve chemical reactions and solutions, we just have to take into account what's different about solutions. And that's mainly the idea of concentration. Um, so again, a lot, of, a lot of important things do, of course, take place in solutions. Your body's a really a big bag of solution chemistry. And so we're getting into the idea of saying, well, you know, we can do stoichiometry in there. And so the, the one way to recognize really any stoichiometry problem, uh, gas or uh, liquid, you know, or solution, is you're going to have a balanced equation because you, you need to get from something to something else. Um, you're you're going to be given information about one reactant and you're going to have to find something else about another reactant or given information about a product and figure out another product or product to reactant, reactant to product. Uh, but that's the key to, to realizing you're in the middle of a stoichiometry problem is that uh, they're going to give you information about one chemical but expect information about a different chemical and you won't be able to do that without a balanced equation. So at some point you're going to need a mole-mole ratio. Now of course you, you don't have to do mole-mole. Um, you could drag it all the way down to the molecular level if you wanted to and deal with Avogadro's number, but you're going to get the same answer. And so what are some things that you might encounter in a solution stoichiometry problem? Well, obviously we'll need a chemical equation. Maybe they'll give it to you balanced. Maybe they won't. Uh, you're going to have concentrations and volumes. And th this is the key difference. Is you, you, this is how you're going to get to moles. Uh, remember in the last video we said that if you take uh, concentration and molarity, moles per liter, and multiply that by liters, you'll end up with moles, and, and with moles you can get into stoichiometry. Now occasionally you might need a molar mass. Uh, maybe they want you to go from moles to grams. Maybe you make a precipitate or something, which means you might need your solubility rules, precipitation. Uh, maybe, maybe you'll need net and total ionic equations. You know, if they ask you how many ions are present, you might have to determine how many ions are in the solution, so you might have to dissociate uh, some stuff. You know, uh, you could easily make a limiting reactant problem out of this if they give you information about two reactants or three reactants instead of just one or however many reactants you have. And then just you know, watch out for the units they're asking for. So what we'll do with we'll go through two examples. Uh, and again, this is by no way all inclusive. Um, but in our first example here, uh, notice that it's not all that different from a classic stoichiometry problem. It's just some of the wording is different. It's really saying, okay, you have a specific amount of barium nitrate solution. And now in this case they're saying uh, 0.15 molar. And again, it's probably preferred to use moles per liter. Uh, the idea of using capital M is, is trying to be um, phased out. Uh, but for sake of space, I went ahead and did that. So we know how much barium nitrate we have. Because if we, again, if you see a volume and a concentration, you know moles. Uh, what it's saying is how much of the sodium sulfate are we going to need to react with it, given a certain concentration. And so that's really all we're doing is we're, we're going from reactant to reactant here. All right, so I'll give you a chance. Go ahead, write down what relevant information you think you need. Hey, welcome back. All right, okay, so this is, this is what I had. I put down the formulas for sodium sulfate, barium nitrate. I put that stuff down. Um, and then I used uh, some descriptive sub subscripts. Again, the idea of using BN for barium nitrate or SS for sodium sulfate is just to, for you to keep track of. That's not an official abbreviation by any stretch of the imagination. But you're looking for the volume of the sodium sulfate. All right. And so you'll need a balanced equation at some point, just like any good stoichiometry problem. So I went ahead and balanced it. I added the downward arrow uh, because I, I realized that the barium sulfate is going to be the precipitate. All right. And they did give you a hint that the barium was going to be uh, the precipitate. All right. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to, I'm going to take my volume and I'm going to move that through my concentration uh, to end up with uh, moles. And so if I take my 12.5 milliliters of the barium nitrate, because that's what they gave me, and then I, I roll that from milliliters to liters and liters to moles, um, I will find out that I have uh, about uh, 0.002 moles of barium nitrate in there. Now, you don't have to stop here. Um, I'm stopping just to show you the intermediate answer, but, but preferably you'd want to go the whole way through the problem and figure everything out. But I, I think hopefully you follow that, is we're using concentration uh, to get a volume into moles. All right, and, and, and then we did just a little bit of uh, prefix conversion there too. And so with that in mind, I can then use my mole to mole ratio. I know that for every one mole of barium nitrate, I have one mole of sodium sulfate. 
Again, I know that because that's what my balanced equation said. And so it ends up being the same answer. Again, we wouldn't have to do this full work. We, we could just plug this as the next step into a factor label problem. And then finally, uh, it's asking for a, a volume. So I'm going to use the concentration I was given for sodium sulfate. And then so moles goes on the bottom, I'll have liters. And since they asked for it in milliliters, then I will go back out to milliliters there using, again, 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And that's it. So I will actually need 7.6 milliliters of sodium sulfate solution uh, to react completely with 12.5 milliliters of 0.15 molar barium nitrate. So don't get intimidated by a solution problem. Really the only difference between this and a classic stoichiometry problem, in classic stoichiometry, you're typically given grams and you use molar mass. Now molar mass is intensive. It's not going to change or anything like that. Uh, concentrations can change. Um, so that's only the, that's the only real big difference. But we're still starting with something, volume, and we're using a conversion to get to moles, in this case concentration. So don't get freaked out by that. Um, if you do this all in one step, you'll probably end up with a little bit of a different answer because I have these intermediate numbers and hence I, I rounded it in the middle. I, I really shouldn't even have technically done that, but I made some compromises for space. So let's look at another example here. All right, so I have 55 uh, milliliters of 1.5 molar, again, mole per liter, don't, don't use the capital M, I did for space, but calcium chloride solution, and I'm adding that to 12, uh, well, 125 milliliters of 0.95 molar silver nitrate. And so how many milligrams of the precipitate will form? I like to look at this problem. They're giving me information about both reactants, uh, which means that this is going to be a limiting reactant problem. You probably noticed that before I said that, so hats off to you. And so you're going to need a balanced equation again. Um, I, I'm assuming you're pausing the video to figure this stuff out. Um, so I have the calcium chloride reacting with the silver nitrate. I'm going to get silver chloride as a precipitate and then the calcium nitrate. All I care about is the silver chloride. Now, I, I will need to figure out a molar mass in this problem because it's asking how many milligrams will be precipitated. Um, so I did, you know, I did the, I did the work for uh, silver chloride. Again, you could, you could certainly figure that out yourself just by adding those together or showing the work. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a little shortcut that might come in handy. Um, in the last problem, I went from milliliters to liters, and then went back out to milliliters when I was done. You can save yourself some time by just using the milli conversion, right? If it's grams per mole, then it's going to be milligrams per millimole. And if it's moles per liter, it's going to be millimoles per milliliter. So it's going to look a little atypical. Don't get scared. Uh, really, all we're doing is we're saving ourselves time. Remember, you can do whatever you want to a conversion as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So start accepting the power that you have as the person setting up this problem. You control what's going on here. Uh, you get to decide how it's set up. And, uh, you know, uh, th with, that, with that practice, with fooling around with it, uh, you'll gain confidence in this. And so in the case of this problem, all right, we had 55 milliliters of calcium chloride solution. And so, uh, again, when I, when I do my limiting reactant problems, I like to drive all the way to my product. Just figure out which makes less product, and that's your limiting reactant. So you've killed two birds with one stone because not only have you figured out who limits, but you've also figured out how much product gets produced. So notice my, my conversions. I left it in the world of milli. And so I, instead of moles per liter, it's millimoles per milliliter. Instead of mole, mole, it's millimole, millimole. And then it's right back out uh, to millimole, milligram. Now, if that freaks you out, just add on two more steps. Go from milli to base unit. At the beginning, uh, you'll be dealing with 1,000. At the end, 1,000 will cancel out. You'll end up with the same answer anyway. And so I have 24,000 milligrams of silver chloride being uh, precipitated out. We don't know if that's the limiting reactant because we haven't fed the other reactant through. So you're going to drive the other reactant to the product, and you'll get a slightly smaller answer. All right. Um, the, and the only reason that this has more sig figs, you'll notice, is the fact that um, the top's concentration was 1.5, and this is 0 0.950. And so then it gave a slightly different number of sig figs. And so since the bottom number is less, that's what actually happens. And so you will be producing about 17 grams of silver chloride. And so those are only two examples of what you can do uh, with uh, solutions in stoichiometry. I bet you can find a lot of neat ways to tie this into other stuff. And one of the ways to get better at this is to try to daisy chain a bunch of different kind of calculations. Um, you know, tr try, try working some other things in here. Maybe try to throw in a gas law and, and have it precipitate out or something. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's what's, what solution stoichiometry looks like. Nothing all that crazy about that. 
Um, and so I think in the next lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, dilution, which isn't a tough topic either. And then we'll start getting a little bit into acids and bases. So, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the prompts and have a great day.